I titled this morning's message, Watch God Work When You Respond to His Request. We're only going to look at the first half of Jonah. We're not going to go through all of the, the griping and complaining he does. But we're, we're going to dwell in the first half. What's that, Ben? Okay. I get it. This morning I was, it, it was sluggish to respond to some of my stuff. Spacebar, please. There we go. The call. Here we go. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Get up. Go to the city of Nineveh and preach against it because their wickedness has confronted me. However, Jonah got up and fled to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went in to go to, with them to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. All right. Now, every once in a while, the, the thing that I like about this book is <clears throat> we can relate. There are times that God wants to do something that you and I don't want to see him do. Think about that for a minute. God said, go preach against Nineveh. And Jonah's like, nah. Nope. No. no. Matter of fact, I'm so disgusted with that, I'm going to go in the other direction. I have no desire to go to Nineveh. So don't be surprised if God asks you to do something that you're going to say, I don't think so. No, not willing to go down that road. Then the Lord hurled a violent wind on the sea. Such a violent storm arose on the sea that the ship threatened to break apart. All right. The sailors were afraid. Each one cried out to his God, Lord G. They threw the ship's cargo into the sea to lighten the load. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down to the lower part of the vessel and had stretched out and fallen into a deep sleep. Who can fall asleep when your hammock is doing this? I don't know that I could, but apparently Jonah could. My wife would tell you I probably could sleep through, through something of that nature, especially like right away. I, I fall into deep sleep right away, and then as the morning comes, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. But anyway, so here we are. I, I just did this. I wasn't even going to do this, but I did this uh, for prosperity purposes. I wanted, I wanted to show you where Jonah got onto the boat. So he was over here going this way. And Nineveh is over here, all right? So he's going this way, not this way, because this way is the way to Nineveh. Are you all with me? This way is to Nineveh, and he's going that way. No, he didn't. Now, as we, the next third passage, we see that he is thrown into the sea, but I just want you to know this, okay? To get to Nineveh from here on the water, you go all the way through the Mediterranean and around down underneath Africa to come back up here, to get up here, to go through here, swimming up these here, to get to Nineveh, all right? That's what we call the scenic route, the long way. 
He could have just jumped out in a caravan and went just like that. And that's, I mean, it's a healthy trip, but that is the long way. All right, next slide, please. The captain approached him and said, what are you doing sound asleep? Get up. Call to your God. Maybe this God will consider us and we won't perish. Come on, the sailors said to each other, let's cast lots. Then we will know who is to blame for the trouble we're in. <laughs> so they cast lots and the lot singled Jonah. Singled out Jonah. Then they said to him, tell us who is to blame for this trouble we're in. What is your business? And where are you from? What is your country? And what people are you from? And he answered, I am a Hebrew. I worship Yahweh, the God of the heavens, who made the sea and the dry land. All right, next slide, please. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, what is this you have done? The men knew he was fleeing from the Lord's presence because he had told them. So they said to him, what should we do to calm the sea that is against us? For the sea is getting worse and worse. And he answered them, pick me up, throw me into the sea, so it may be quiet down for you. For I know that I am to blame for this violent storm that is against you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not because the sea was raging against them more and more. All right. So they're trying to be compassionate towards this rebellious person. Next slide, please. So they called out to the Lord, Yahweh, or please, Yahweh, do not let us perish because of this man's life. And don't charge us with innocent blood. For Yahweh has have done just as you please. They picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped raging. The men feared the Lord even more. They offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. I imagine superstitious people, when they come across something that they can't explain, they're like, okay, I am a believer now. And I can imagine them thinking that all their life, you know, they've asked for graces from their God, little g, and have found little. Now they ask grace from the big God who they've not ever worshipped before and thrown somebody overboard and that somebody's throwing overboard has now spared their life. They're like, this is powerful. For me, that sounds kind of like it'd be a life-changing event. How many of you think you would change your life if this had happened to you? If you were on the boat and this happened to you, you're like, your eyes get big. You're like, what have we just done? I mean, it, it's obviously hard just to get to the point where you decide to throw somebody over. Next slide, please. Or hit the space bar. Now, the Lord had appointed a huge fish. Everyone say huge fish. There wasn't much commitment in that. Let's try it again. Okay, I, I think you guys got to get the picture of this. You got to get this. This fish can swallow Jonah whole. Stand up, Fred. What kind of fish could swallow Fred whole? Think about this for a minute. This is a huge fish. And it can't be a whale because a whale can't swallow. So this is a huge fish. And the Lord appointed this fish. So this was not a fish that the fishermen were going to pick, catch in their nets. 
He had appointed this fish for the sole purpose. And Jonah was in the fish how many days? Three days and three nights. Three days and three nights, I would bet the, the digestive juices would be in to eat the clothes. I could imagine your skin beginning to maybe tender blisters, uh, the, the acids of the, the great fish's uh, digestive system. I can imagine it's not a good thing. And then the fish swallows him. Or let's go to the next slide. Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, inside the fish. I called to the Lord in my distress. He answers me. I cried out for help in the belly of the shoal. He thinks this is hell. You heard my voice. You threw me into the depths, into the heart of the sea, and the current overcame me. All your breakers and your billows swept over me. But I have said, I have banished from your sight, yet I will look once more toward the holy temple. The waters engulf me. Up to the neck, the water depths overcame me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. Now, how many of you think that, that would be annoying to have seaweed wrapped around your head? And again, depending on the type of scenario, you might not be able to get the seaweed off because your arms are bound to your side, pinned by the cage, the rib cage, of the beast that you're in. You might not be able to get your hands up here to get the seaweed off. And you're just, you might not be able to. Are you with me this morning? This is a gross environment. No wonder why he compared it to Shoal. And again, being three days in the belly, how much light do you think he has? How much food do you think he has? Seaweed sandwiches. That might be enough to sustain. Maybe. Or smaller fish, partially chewed. You don't know want to. Fred, even you could fast in this environment. Next slide, please. I sank to the foundations of the mountains. The earth within its prison bars closed behind me forever. But you raised my life from the pit. Lord my God, as my life is fading away, I remember Yahweh. My prayer came to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forsake faithful love. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with a voice of thanksgiving. I will fulfill what I have vowed. Salvation is from the Lord. Salvation is from the Lord. And he close out this. The Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah onto land. All right. I don't know what the first thing is for you. But I can imagine to say that he needs a clothes, change of clothes is a given. And, and now he is in fresh water, so he could actually bathe in the river, you know, and, and try to compose himself. 
and, and to watch the great fish swim away. I, I, I bet you he has a new outlook on his demeanor. I, 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 I mean, he's like, Lord, I'm not going to go to Nineveh. And what does he find in front of him? The place that he does not want to go is in front of him. He's thrown up onto the shore. The call is reaffirmed. Well, did we read that slide? The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Get up. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach the message that I tell you. Jonah got up, went to Nineveh according to the Lord's command. Now, Nineveh was an extremely large city. Three-day walk through the city. Jonah set out on the first day in the city and proclaimed, In 40 days, Nineveh will be demolished. That's your fire and brimstone preacher there. Make your house ready because calamity is coming. You have less than six weeks to get everything in order. Six weeks and you will be no more. That's fire and brimstone. Now, I don't know about you, but most people don't like fire and brimstone, right? The people that respond to fire and brimstone, that's like 10 or 12% of the population. 88% of the population wants to hear about the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Again, only 12% respond. And that's an old stat. I don't know what that stat is today, but that's probably a 20-year-old stat. In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. The men of Nineveh believed God. Now, I, I wonder if this had to look at, at Jonah because he looked like he was scary. You know, Boils on his skin from the, 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 the acid of the fish on him and the holes in his... It, again, I wonder if he had a look about him that, he, like, we better just listen to this guy because he's got, he looks scary. Anybody with me? Anybody think Jonah looked scary? He's not worried about telling his story. He's worried about telling them yeah. calamity's coming. Calamity's coming. If there's any left. When the word reached the king of Nineveh, he got up from his throne took off his royal robes, put on sackcloth, and sat in ash. Even the king repented. Even the king repented. He also issues a decree in Nineveh, order the king and his nobles, no man or beast, herd or flock, is to taste anything at all. They must not eat or drink water. Furthermore, both man and beast must be covered in sackcloth, and everyone must call out earnestly to God. Each must turn from his evil ways and from the violence he is doing. Who knows? God may turn and relent. He may turn from his burning anger so that we will not perish. God saw their actions and they turned from their evil ways. So God relented from the disaster he had threatened to do to them. And he did not do it. He did not do it. Now think about this a minute. We always say that God is omniscient. We always say that God is in control. And we believe that. 
But I have said repeatedly from the pulpit that there are times that God does not operate with the foreknowledge of the future. This is an example. He sent a messenger so that a city might be changed. He intended to give them an opportunity. And he relented from the calamity because of their repentance. This is a big deal. God did not punish them without giving them opportunity to, to repent. He gave them an opportunity to repent. Let's get to our supporting scriptures. Supporting scripture number one. For God so loved the world, in this way, he gave his one and only son, that everyone, everyone, say everyone, everyone, not just your favorites, everyone, that includes the people that you get annoyed with, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. Maybe you've heard of this passage. For Christ also suffered the sins once and for all, righteous and for the unrighteous, that he may bring you to God after being put to death in the flesh, the fleshly realm, but made alive in spiritual realm. 1 Peter 3.18. Big Pete tells us this. The sun is of the radiance of God's glory and exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his power, powerful word, and making purification for sin. Hebrews 1, 3. If he is willing to sacrifice his son for you and I, he's willing to sacrifice his son for people in Nineveh. He's willing to sacrifice and forgive, and give an opportunity of repentance to the people who harm us, for the people who do us wrong, for the people that we can't stand to be around, he will do the same for them as he's done for us. If you walk out of here with anything, walk out of here with a, this to know. Don't be afraid to watch God do miracles in the people that you don't like life. And when you are obedient, you will see God's work through you when you do what he's asked. Even if it's helping that guy out that you can't stand to be around. You see him having a flat tire alongside the road and you pull over and you get out and you're like, oh man. You walk over to the back of your vehicle, you pull out your tire iron and you walk over and let me help you with that. And he's like, why would you help me. He's going to think that. Why will he help me? That's what Jesus would do. So getting this lug nut off. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for that. I needed to be corrected. I think Jonah is a great example for us of what can happen when we go the opposite direction of what God wants us. In your own life, if you choose to go against God, you can expect a messy outcome. Maybe things are going to break down in your life a little more than normal. Maybe you're going to have more flat tires, more broken fan belts, more whatevers. Maybe you're going to have more frustration in life because you've gone the direction against where God has asked you to go. And maybe you need to stop and say, okay, Lord, I will change direction. I will give grace and mercy to those I can't stand. And again, Jonah did not want Nineveh to repent. He wanted God's judgment. 
He wanted God to smack them in the mouth because Nineveh had smacked Israel in the mouth over and over again. The history of their animosity towards each other is well documented in the Old Testament. Jonah was ready for that smacking in the mouth of King of Nineveh. And he's like, 40 days, God's going to bring calamity. 40 days, and you will be no more. And even the king ordered everyone to repent, including the animals couldn't drink e either. So as you and I want to see our community evangelized, as you and I want to see things improve and we want to see a revival take place in this nation. Let us be open-minded to what that might look like. Allowing us to see past our, let's just find another farmer just like me who thinks like me and comes to church with me so that I have another me in church. We don't need another you in church. We want somebody else. One Fred is enough. One Mike is enough. One FJ is enough. One Ben is enough. One Vicky is enough. And Patty's enough. We don't need two of them. Right? All right. Let's stand.